Hello, my name is Clark Hathaway. And I'm Sebastian Mobo. And today we'll be presenting the work in our SC poster submission entitled A Framework for Linking Urban Traffic and Vehicle Emissions in Smart Cities. So most people are already familiar with the presence of traffic in big cities and the harms it introduces. Congestion is a well-known problem, but the irreparable damage done by emissions poses a threat to public health and the environment. Despite these obvious concerns, the questions researchers ask in tackling them do not come with simple answers. The questions we ask are, how do traffic patterns affect vehicle emissions? Specifically, does traffic congestion induce additional emissions? If we can mitigate emissions by reducing congestion, how do we define and measure congestion itself? Other questions include, if traffic patterns are driven by human behavior, how do we separate this from other variables? And finally, how do we consider multiple data sets when they're diverse in both their formats and the method in which they were sourced? So we hypothesize that traffic congestion yields a significant increase in vehicle emissions. And to test this, we will develop metrics to measure traffic congestion and also perform a correlation analysis to show that emissions are increased when congestion increases. And in our exploration of this problem, we develop a methodology to understand the relationship between traffic and emissions and provide a generalized framework for future work to build off. We apply this methodology to data describing the Chicago loop so we can validate our framework and also test our hypothesis. So if you look at our framework, it's a five stage workflow, where if we look at the first stage on the top level here, we take the original data as we uh, had it and we uh, perform a series of pre-processing and simplification steps so we can extrapolate from and transform this data for the next level beneath it, uh, where we then fuse the data into a unified urban layout with respect to traffic density and vehicle emissions. In the next level, we can actually visualize these models. And beneath this, we aggregate these metrics over the urban layout, again, with respect to traffic density and vehicle emissions. And finally, in the last level, we can take these two quantities and through a statistical analysis, we can reveal meaningful correlations between them. So looking, for, uh, looking first at one half of our framework, we start with vehicle positions and apply pre-processing steps because as you can see by this plot of vehicle positions represented by yellow dots, you can see how in these uh, blue circled sections, some of these dots are, do not lie on top of roads or are in uh, bodies of water or on top of railroad tracks. And our original data set had unreal unrealistic locations for vehicles like these. So we had to develop pre-processing steps in order to validate and correct these um, unrealistic locations as we found them. And our solution to this was to take advantage of redundancy in, in these vehicle position records to recompute invalid position coordinates as we found them. As you can see by this diagram um, in the center, where we take an unreliable Y coordinate and correct it to a reliable Y coordinate that lies on top of a road um, that is associated with this vehicle uh, record. Then we simplify complex building footprint polygons by computing their centroids and cross-sectional areas. And then we map vehicle uh, positions to nearby buildings using a KD tree uh, nearest neighbors mapping algorithm. As you can see by this plot, or in this plot, where we have uh, vehicle positions represented by black dots that are mapped to the centers of buildings represented by the colored rectangles. So looking at this half of our workflow, you can see how we move from um, initial data in blue through the pre-processing and simplification steps I just went over in gray then to um, a vehicle to building mapping out, or stage in pink. And finally, we can aggregate these mappings by building in order to get a per building metric of traffic density, which can be plotted into a map as seen on the right, where already we can see traffic hotspots as shown by the yellow and light green um, rectangles on the map. The other half of the workflow is concerned with taking the uh, vehicle emissions data we had and expanding it. Uh, the data is provided 
uh, in a format where we're given quantities per uh, road per hour. So if uh, every hour we want to understand how the emissions are affecting the rest of the area, uh, this is very difficult to do. So we modeled the dispersal of emissions using a cell-based heat map, uh, which you can see depicted in the, in the middle image. Cells are defined over the cells defined over the area of a road become source cells, and the algorithm computes the value of whatever r squared for each cell, where r is the distance from that cell to a given uh, source cell that is nearby. And so the white circles represent the radius of influence for a uh, selected uh, source cell you know, in this model. And so looking at this half of the workflow in, in its entirety, uh, we take the uh, physical road network structure and we take these emissions values. We model the dispersal as I just described using the cell-based approach. And when you start to look at this, um, it's a bit more scarce than you might expect for such a dense area, but you do see these hotspots present themselves uh, throughout the region of interest, uh, where the bright yellow ones are uh, areas of higher emissions than the, the red. And finally, we take these emissions values over the area of each building and we sum them up to uh, essentially aggregate emissions values into per building uh, sums. And so when we take uh, the uh, visualizations of the vehicle counts and overlay it with the dispersed emissions, uh, what we can do is this allows us to uh, perform a qualitative analysis of emissions and traffic hotspots and we can see how they coincide. So moving to our quantitative analysis now, we found a weak positive correlation between mapped vehicle counts and emission concentrations um, from in a period from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., which can be seen by the upward sloping dashed blue line in the center of this plot that runs through the uh, dark gray data points. And this morning rush hour effect is also visible when plotting emissions concentration values, as can be seen by the cluster of dark um, dashed lines um, that cluster around the peak of this emissions concentrations histogram. And so looking at some of the artifacts that have come out of this research, uh, we produced a heat map generation tool, which can generate similar images uh, that we show that like we've shown before uh, for any GeoJSON road network file and a properly formatted CSV file depicting the uh, emissions quantities. We also built uh, vehicle mapping tools and a library which can take the same inputs as above plus the building data and compute vehicle building mappings. So in our analysis of the Chicago loop, we apply methods for characterizing, cleaning, and fusing data about traffic and emissions. We found a weak correlation between traffic and emissions during foreign commute hours and we observe both spatial and temporal patterns in emissions throughout the area of interest. So in future work, we could perhaps model other variables that affect emissions, such as building height, vehicle types, and the weather. And perhaps we could also develop other mapping methods, such as methods that map vehicles to multiple buildings based on some kind of distance threshold. If you would like to learn more, we encourage you to visit our GitHub repository and that is all we have for you. Thank you for your time.